Wen Ting Yung, farewell to a traveller eastward bound. As yellow leaves are falling at this desolate post, on impulse you decide to leave. A high wind blows at Hanyang Ferry Crossing as the sun rises over Yong Men Mountain. Few of us are left now at the riverside, as your lone boat heads towards the sky's end. When will we meet again, I ask, with cups of wine to ease the pain of separation. So we move on to another poet in this anthology. This is the first of four poems by Wen Ting Yung, and as usual, when we read the first poem of a poet, we have to introduce a little bit about his background. So, Wen Ting Yun, a couple of things to note about him. He is a late Tang poet. He mainly flourished in the middle years of the 9th century, during the so-called Taizong era, 847-860. And he came from an illustrious family who had had some you know, important politicians in the early Tang dynasty. But he wasn't excessively successful. He didn't even manage to pass the examination for presented scholar. Nevertheless, he did manage to hold some middle, lower level positions, never rising to important posts in the administration. His highest post was instructor in the Directorate of Education. And he died in 870. Now, Wen Ting Yu had a reputation for being a bit, a bit you know, brash, uh, uh, a bit too satirical, unconventional. And uh, this perhaps goes to explain his lack of success in the examinations. And in poetry, he is very interesting, not so much for the poems that will probably be included in this anthology, which are she, but uh, because he was one of the first important writers in a new genre of poetry, uh, the genre of zoo poetry. And uh, even though he wrote a lot of she poems, like the ones in this anthology, 300 of them at least have been preserved, he is famous for his Tzu poetry. We aren't going to talk about the Tzu here. We will just say that it's a new genre that appeared during the late uh, Tang dynasty, but especially flourished in the next one, in the, in the Song dynasty. And um, um, uh, the main interest um, for us is that uh, subject matters generally uh, slightly what we would call decadentist. It's always about lone beauties, uh, mildly erotic scenes of female beauty and languishness in, in, in opulent backgrounds, generally love poetry of the sort that the stricter Confucians would consider immoral. So, Wen Tin Yun, as a she poet, here is giving us a typical example, you know, a very, very conventional example of the typical uh, poetry of the genre. So this is a poem, as you have probably noticed already from the title, that is about a very conventional topic, which is parting, separation between scholar officials. Uh, you know, paraphrasing the poem very briefly, the poem tells of the separation of uh, Wen Ting Yun from another friend, another traveller, who is going to the east by boat, mm, travelling down the river. And as usual, these poems all form, you know, they're all part of the same mould, uh, the, 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 the background tone is always sad and uh, melancholy at the separation of friends. And this connects with all the tradition we've already talked about in many other poems about uh, scholar officials having to travel, about uh, the social character of Chinese poetry, about traveling as always something seen through the lens of negativity, of, of, of the passage of time, of, of being uprooted. From one's roots. So these are always sad poems, they're always complaints, and sometimes they include a description of the parting celebration, the parting party with the, the night before, the separation being spent drinking wine, reciting poetry. And always with, you know, a background of descriptive elements of the landscape or of nature which um, intensify the sadness. And, and this happens in this poem, certainly. Okay, then, so as usual, let's um, take a look at it couplet by couplet. First couplet. As yellow leaves are falling at this desolate post, on impulse you decide to leave. So the title of the poem is Farewell to a Traveller. We're going to get the story of a traveller uh, going away. The first couplet, as usual, generally introduces us uh, in, into the time and place, 
and the circumstances in which uh, the, 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 then the action or then the story narrated in the poem takes place. As yellow leaves are falling, so this is probably autumn. And remember, autumn is always a good background for any melancholy uh, situation because it's the melancholy season par excellence. While the leaves are falling, we're at a desolate post, so probably half ruined or half abandoned post, which again emphasizes this melancholy sadness of, of the background and this idea of the passage of time, the ruin of time on a physical place, but presumably also on, on, on the people who are talking or are, are living this moment. On impulse, you decide to leave. Perhaps this is the most surprising thing. It, the translation seems to transmit the idea that this, uh, this separation has been decided, you know, right now, or on a whim, if you will. Uh, perhaps this is, you know, not really so. It's just meant to emphasize uh, the intensity of the sadness because of the unpredictability of this um, decision to separate of Wenting Jung and his unnamed uh, traveler friend. So right now, in this context, in this sad location, in this sad time of the year, you, my friend, have decided to go away. Not explained why you're deciding to go away. Where isn't explicitly mentioned. It's just eastward bound, to the east. In fact, the next couplet will locate us more specifically in a geographical area. Couplet number two. A high wind blows at Hangyang Ferry Crossing. As the sun rises over Yongmen Mountain. So in this moment that uh, Wen Ting Jung and his friend are deciding to leave, we get a description of a natural phenomenon and we get a description of also geographical uh, elements in the parallelistic couplet. So the wind uh, blowing is parallel to the sun rising and uh, the Hanyang Ferry is parallel to the Yongmen Mountain. A couple of things to mention here. So the Hanyang Ferry Crossing in Yongmen Mountain, although I found it in other translations as Jingmen Mountain, locate us in the province of Hubei. Hubei is in the center south of China. It's uh, the area just to the north of the Yangtze River. I think Hanyang Crossing is uh, in an area, I don't know if it's a confluence between that or close to a confluence between the Han River and the, the Yangtze River. So this is an important area in the Tang Dynasty. It's, uh, the south became very prosperous during the Tang. The Grand Canal uh, connected uh, as in a pipeline the, the Jiangsu with the Northern River. Uh, this was the time of the Southern uh, China Economic Revolution in which most of the population of China um, started to be the people around the Jiangsu. And near Hangyang you have other important um, places that were very important in Tang poetry. For example, Yellow Crane Tower, which received some poems in this anthology, is pretty close to this Hangyang Ferry Crossing. This would have been, as we say, in the middle course of the Jiangsu. So any traveling east would have, mean, would have meant going east to the sea, to the area of uh, Nanjing, uh, the area of Suzhou, and, uh, and of the big urban settlements at the end of the Jiangsu River. So we have uh, Yingmen Mountain, close, and uh, Hangyang Ferry. We're in this area, in the middle of the Jiangtze River. A high wind is blowing from the Hangyang Ferry crossing. So this is a horizontal image. Wind is blowing. In which direction? Is it pushing? Is it going to push the boat that the traveler is going to, to climb into to the east? Or is it blocking? Is it stopping or attempting to stop his movement? The sun is rising over young man mountain. So very typical. This other image, nature image, this is a vertical one. So it's morning. Uh, the sun is rising from the young man mountain. Yeah, so we have a vertical versus a horizontal image. But they're both images of movement, yeah, which therefore uh, rhyme uh, or, or, or act as a good background for the movement of the traveller himself. Third couplet, and uh, the third couplet seems to focus, take us from the background explanations and the surroundings to the actual traveling, uh, to the traveler leaving, and a description of what Wenting Yun sees. Few of us are left now at the riverside, as your lone boat heads towards the sky's end. So perhaps there were other people that had been feasting with Wenting Yun and his unnamed traveler during the night or just before. Uh, uh, leaving after, presumably he had stated that he was planning to leave. 
Anyway, of those people who might have been there, very few remain. So this is an image of loneliness. Uh, this image of, of forlornness, of loneliness, is emphasized also in the second line by the lone boat heading towards the sky. And so this is a very visual image, a very pictorial image. Few people in the bank looking sadly at a parting boat, only one that is going towards horizon's end. And finally, the conclusion. As usual, the last couplet takes us from the more descriptive or, or, or landscape view of the poem to the more subjective feelings of the poetic persona. It's very typical for the last couplet to encapsulate the feelings of the poet in a neat uh, rounding up of the whole poem and its tone. When will we meet again, I ask, with cups of wine to ease the pain of separation? So we might imagine now that the boat has gone away, Wenting Yung is alone, and he is, you know, reflexively, sadly, in a melancholy mood, drinking a little bit of wine, uh, the wine meant as a consolation for being separated from his friend, and uh, thinking, when will we meet again? The future is uncertain. We might meet in a few years' time or never. Yeah, the future is an uncertain country. So, uh, not a bad poem. Uh, that's all for today. I'm pretty conventional in topic and in form. So, uh, nothing really original. But then again, uh, as I've said many times, uh, the selection of poems for this anthology is not based on striking originality or even on extreme aesthetic quality. One of the main criteria is that uh, they, they be simple poems, simple enough for a relatively young person to be able to read and understand. And the more conventional, I imagine, the better. The better they fit the, the, the topics, the conventional topics, the better, because, you know, they, they introduce you to the genre and they give you ideas on how to imitate or write this sort of poetry with this type of wording and ambience and background.